So, Rheinsberg. Um, Rheinsberg is the first novel by Kurt Tucholsky. Tucholsky was a very famous in his time, a journalist, satirist. Um, he was a, um, an ardent uh, foe of the Nazis. Not, not, in the, not when he wrote the Rheinsberg, of course. The novel is from 1912. But he, that's what he became. Uh, they didn't like him. He was on the list of the first 10 people to get their books burned. And um, he was, yes, he was a left winger. He, he, he was not the party member. So he waffled a bit. So they, the parties tried to, to get him into the fold that never worked. So Rensberg, the book, uh, he wrote that very early. Um, he, the book goes back to a trip he did in 1911. At that time, he was 21. And he did the trip with his then girlfriend, Else Weil. She was one year older than he was. And it was a revolutionary book. It was a love story about a couple from Berlin, from the city, so classical city slickers. They went in the countryside to the old castles, to the lakes, to, to the you know, nature, making fun of nature all the time. So it's not one of those romantic back to nature things. And they were not married. So in the year 9 11, uh, 1911 or 1912, that was unusual. They didn't plan on getting married. They did eventually, but that wasn't in the cards when he wrote the book. And um, she was um, to become a doctor, also very unusual for um, that time. And he, he was studying. He was, uh, at that time, was planning to become a lawyer. That didn't work out. So he was very early on trying to become a writer. And it's also language. The language is um, it's, it's hard to describe. You have to read it for yourself. They're like um, frolicking and, and using silly words. And um, it's all not serious at all. So it, um, it's a love story, but a very um, kind of a satirical love story, really. It's, it's, um, it's a really hard to describe book. So it's, it's just one trip, three days in Rheinsberg where they are making fun of each other, making fun of the town folks and um, are in love, but not, are not talking about love. It's, it's more talking about this and that and Germany and Frederick the Great and how she has asked him at some point, would you die for your country? And he says, I'm going to die for you. I'm only dying for you, which she also doesn't do. And um, yeah. It was, it was a new style. People didn't write like this before. So that's the one thing that's unusual. The other thing is that he did a big effort to promote the book. He, after he wrote it, and it's, keep in mind, it's only um, the manuscript of 35 pages. The actual book is longer, but that's because you cannot have a book of 35 pages. So you have to fill it up with pictures and stuff. But it's, a very, it's, it's like a longer New Yorker essay, really, which he turned into a book. He went to Prague, he met Franz Kafka, he met Max Brod, he enlisted them to help him with the book. And keep in mind, at this time, he was completely unknown. He was 21 and he had published, I want to say, five stories, none of them in a big paper. So they helped him. Uh, they, he found an, a publisher who paid him very badly, but paid him. And he rented um, a book bar, a bar where he sold the book. And um, the advertisement was, if you buy a book, you get a drink for free, which I'm not sure if it's true, but he did, get, he did give out drinks and give out books. So. And newspapers wrote about it. And it was in every bigger paper, that famous book on Kurfürstendamm, in the beginning of Kurfürstendamm, number, I think, 14, so fancy location. And the location did exist before and after. It, it was a Mampus Gute Stube, a, a, a bar. So he, he used the facilities. And he said that the drum up a lot of support for the book. And he would all in all eventually sell 100,000 copies. And it was a big success. And he got a job at the Weltbühne because his book was such a, such a big success and everybody liked it. So it was really the start of his career. And he put a lot of work in it. He once talked about how he wrote and rewrote and he put the whole story on, on, on little notes and, and sorted them out and, and re-sorted them. So 
it, it's a book that reads itself very easy and, and easy going and lightweight, but he, there's a lot of work behind it, making it look like this. So what happened? So Elsa, Elsa Weil, the woman who is his girlfriend then, he named her Claire in the book. And I added some, some poems uh, for Claire, which he wrote mostly, I think mostly after Rheinsberg happened. They stayed friends. Then he was drafted into World War II, uh, sorry, World War I. Uh, he met another, he didn't do a lot of fighting. He said he put his gun in a corner and forgot about it in, on purpose, which may or may not be true. He told a lot of stories like this about his life. <laughs> So he met another woman, Mary Gerold, who became to be the big love of his life. Mary wasn't sure if, he, if she wanted to be with him because she felt he was somewhat unreliable. So they hooked up. Then he went back to Berlin. He hooked up with Elsa again, with Claire. Then Mary came to Berlin and she figured he's hooked up with somebody else. She left Berlin. He wrote to her and she came back. They hooked up again. Eventually he got divorced from Elsa and married Mary in that all happened in 1924. So Elsa and he were together from 1911 to 1924, and um, Mary and he were together from 1917 to 1921. And then she moved out because he had a lot of girlfriends and she couldn't handle it anymore. So he wasn't, he was a very famous writer and he was a fantastic writer, but not very good in relationships with females. I think this can take the back. <laughs> yeah, and the book has been published and republished. There was a big fight about the book after, after World War II because um, the publisher had sold the rights to the widow of um, Siegfried Jakobson, who was Tucholsky's editor. He died, his widow, his I, th I think, no, he did. He sold them to the widow directly. She didn't inherit it from, from her husband. And she resold it to a London-based company, and so Mary had a lot of trouble claiming the rights back. And in that process, we learned that he only got 125 marks for the book at that time, and never any royalties. So that's more than today, but it's still not that much. It's like $200. So, and then no, no, it's more. It's, it's like $1,000, I'd say. So, but but you know, still, for a book that sells 100000 that would not make you happy. But it's, it's unprecedented. There wasn't a book like this before, not after. And as friends testified, it's, it was really Elsa, Claire, who invented that kind of language. So she, uh, she really spoke like this in this funny voice and then you know, making a little bit of fun of him, but, but still being like half serious. But you never knew. Maybe she wasn't serious at all. And she was always ready for a laugh, and, 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 and she must have been a very happy person at that time. Yeah. Please like this video and subscribe for more content from the Leo Beck Institute.